Hi, it's Michael Cocken. Um, it's the 12th of February 2019 and I'm about to start documenting um, the building of a dust collection system in this small home workshop of mine. I'll just talk you through some of the issues. Um, I've done a bit of a thing on the board here. So I'm about to start a dust collection system. Um, fine sawdust in your workshop can be quite a hazard, especially if you're doing uh, copper arsenate uh, treated wood, they're called permapine. And so, okay. so um, you know, I wish uh, there are good dust collection systems for industrial use. So you get the big uh, blowers and the big canvas bags and, and lots of air movement. But uh, people with, like myself with a small home workshop, you're restricted to using something called a shop vac, which is a bit like this little R2D2 thing with wheels on it. And it's, it, it's a, a vacuum cleaner you can drag around. Um, what, what is recommended to stop you from filling up your, your little shop vac with dust and sawdust is um, you, you, can, you, can have, you can buy a cyclone which intercepts most of the dust and, and shavings before it gets into your shop vac filter. And it, it sort of operates like this where um, the dust comes in here and it goes around and around in this cyclone and then drops down into a collecting bin beneath it. Meanwhile, the suction is from here to your shop vac and it sucks more or less clean air from the middle of the vortex. So this dust is, is, is actually circulating around the edges and the, the suction is from the middle. So and that goes that almost clean air goes into your, into your shop vac. So what what you want to do is you're trying to set up a system of tubes in your workshop which you can connect um, any kind of saw or drill to, and that will suck it into your dust collection system. And the tubing is a, a problem because um, first of all um, the resistance in the tubes is uh, determined by several factors. One, for example, the more bends you have in your tubing system, the more resistance, because of course the air has to go around corners. The rougher your piping, you know, you get this crinkly vacuum hose, that has quite a lot of resistance because of, of the turbulence in the pipe. And then of course the diameter of the actual tubing that you're using, um, the, the bigger the diameter, um, the less resistance, but of course, um, if your shop vac, like mine, is not very powerful, it's not going to be able to move that much air. So you can't have a big drain pipes, so you have to have a, a happy medium of the diameter. So I'm about to start doing that and I'll talk you through wh where I've got to up to now. Okay, so I spoke about, there's my shop vac, it's a Ryobi shop vac, um, just a standard little one. Um, and I've already begun, you, can, you might remember some of you have seen some of my other vlogs. This is the rotating tool station, which um, will have a drill press and a saw and whatnot, but I've needed to set up the dust collection system before I set up the tools on here, because the idea is I'll have the shop back there, and here I have built a, a wooden structure to deaden the noise, it's a very noisy about that thing. Um, and there's the cyclone on the top of its collection bin here. And uh, this, the, connection, the collection bin sits in this little, little um, well, holder here. So you can take it off or put it on whenever you want to empty the bin. And um, this is where this, uh, this goes off to the vacuum cleaner, as I showed you. And this comes from the suction of uh, the dust. I thought you might be <laughs> amused to see how tricky it is to join A to B in this whole dust collection tubing system. I'm trying to, this is the, the intake from the vacuum cleaner which is now underneath here. I'm trying to get this vacuum cleaner hose up onto the top of that and of course bearing in mind that smooth is better than crinkled like these ones and I've got all sorts of different gauges of crinkled you know hose um, so I first I tried to arrange something which, which would have just um, PVC smooth PVC pipe with elbows but that's just too you know it's just too many kinks and that would slow the airflow so I've now gone back to the idea of using a hose a crinkled hose going down pinned onto the side of this 
and then onto the vacuum cleaner hose. And then the next thing will be to, this is the intake into the, into the cyclone. The next thing will be to connect this up to, to here and across the, the workshop. Okay, so I've gone a step further now with my uh, workshop dust collecting system. The shop vac is underneath this heavy box here. It's open on this end to blow the air out, but it's very heavy wood just to keep the sound down. And you can see, if you look down there, you can see um, the vacuum cleaner hose coming out there. And it goes up here, and I've made these connections here. I've tried not to have too many bends, although there are two bends there. Presumably this should just go straight on there, but um, I need to be able to take it off. So. Um, this isn't very bent, it's that rough tube, so I've just siliconed the joints so that there's no leakage and it sucks pretty well. Now uh, comes the, the hose connection for sucking in the, uh, the dust and this hose connection I'm planning to go across and up to this bar which is part of the, the oh, what could you call them, the struts in the, in the shed and I'll have from this uh, this will go across and up and then there will be a, a spout coming down to the top of the rotating tool bench and a couple of in there which I can clo open and close when, when I need them to clean up this side of the workshop. So that's where I am now. Well, it's now the 3rd of March, it's a Sunday and I have finished my dust collection system. Um, you can see uh, the cyclone and the collection bin and then you can see this going down to the vacuum cleaner which is underneath in this sort of soundproof box underneath there and then from here the suction comes either down to the rotating field um, tool station where I can attach it with these adapters that I've bought to whatever um, intake is on the particular tool and if I'm not using it, I can actually, use, I'm just going to use an end cap. So you'll see, for example, here on the end of this, uh, there's just an end cap, a PVC end cap, to stop the air from going in that intake. And then I've got, uh, it's, it's a bit of a work of art, I think. I've got the vacuum cleaner, you remember that goes down to the revolving tool station, and then this PVC pipe continues along here to the other side of the workshop, and the vacuum cleaner hose is stored up <laughs> in a space that I would never use anyway. It's, this is just head height for me here. So it's above head height out of the way. So I'm quite pleased with that as well. And it works. It works like a charm. It's an amazing suction. And it's collecting lots of, of the dust in here before it gets, the air gets sucked down into the vacuum cleaner. And since we last spoke, I've actually erected a... a another shelf above here because that's a space I don't use and I've managed to find the paint that matches the, the conduits which when I originally did the shed so it's all done and I've also while I'm here um, got myself a trickle charger for a car battery so I've got a car battery underneath and this is the trickle charger connected up here and I've just made a little housing for it against the wall also with the paint that I found the original paint which matches the, the conduits and so on so that's it. Um, dust collection done. Now to buy some tools um, to put onto the tool station. See ya. of the town you are working you are fleeting you are making you are staking all the money you have earned now that you are a taker do i look at you and cry are you calling me much later will you give it all a try oh i can hear the traffic on the highway to the plane where rubber wheels keep turning with a message full of pain and the sounds they are a yearning